Welcome to War Hero War Score Review. I am the Twin Coot, and in this kit compare, we're going to be taking a look at two Seraphon units the Carnosaur and Troglodon. War Score Review Kit Compare. It's been requested quite a few times now, so I have to do it. Carnosaur or Troglodon? Which should you build? They come out of the same kit and are also included in the start collecting box, so it's no wonder I keep getting this question. First of all, I have to note I'm considering both versions of Carnosaurs, meaning Scar Veteran and Old Blood Riders. Also note that to get more specific tactics on Troglodons or Carnosaurs, check out the rest of my channel for war score reviews on both units. I'll put links to them in the description. Starting off with the basics, their stat wheels are identical. Their damage tables are slightly different, meaning their movements degrade at different rates, but other than that, they're the same, with movement 10, 12 wounds, and a 4-up save. The one difference here is the Scar Veteran has a shield to protect from Ren minus 1. This ability is actually a pretty significant boost and keeps our monster model around a bit longer, especially since re-rolling saves is so easy to come by in a Seraphon army. And that's all well and good, but if the opponent sees a big dinosaur, they are inclined to shoot it. Unfortunately, none of these models stand up to even medium firepower. Offensively, the models are all over the place. Obviously the two Carnosaur variants have similar combat abilities, but the Troglodon was not meant to be a beat stick. While it lacks any rend on any of its weapons, 8 out of 9 of its melee attacks are damaged too, so that's a plus. Between the Carnosaur variants, there is a lot to consider. The Old Blood's Carnosaur does 3 damage with its jaws, but the Old Blood does D3 damage. The Scar Veteran's Carnosaur does D3 damage, but the Scar Veteran does a flat 2 damage with its Great Blade. Also, the Scar Veteran's Carnosaur is slightly more accurate with its 3 up to hit. Another point for the Scar Vet is the fact that only the Rider can take magic weapons and the 2 damage Great Blade or 6 attack War Spear are a bit better candidates for augmentation. The reason I say this is because the Old Blood's D3 damage is quite unreliable and with only 3 attacks there is not much room for bad rolling. Carnosaurs have quite a few special rules that occur in the combat phase, but I'm not going to go into complete detail of them here. If you want that, check out their War Scroll view. Just know that they mostly make the Carnosaur more deadly after his already done damage. These are interesting, fluffy bonuses, but as stated, the Carnosaur is somewhat flimsy, so if the opponent is really worried about them, they will focus the monster down pretty quickly, thus potentially stopping the ability before it triggers. In basic combat ability, the Carnosaur wins out, and in my opinion, the Scar Veteran at the front again. But melee is not the only place these monsters can fight. The Troglodon and Old Blood have ranged weapons. Both are actually pretty similar, with the Old Blood's D6 Ren 1 attacks compared to the Troglodon's D3 Damage 2 attacks. Honestly, neither are at all scary, but the Troglodon's does serve another purpose. If the target suffers any wounds from the Troglodon's range attack, you can add 3 inches to its charge range so long as it ends within half inch of that same target. We'll come back to why that's actually a pretty cool ability when also considering Seraphon battle traits. Anyway, both the Carnosaur variants have command abilities, but the Troglodon can unbind one spell like a wizard and decreases enemy bravery by one, which also pairs with quite a few other Seraphon units like Saurus unit banners and Dread Saurians. The Scarvet's command ability lets a Saurus unit make an extra attack on a hit roll of six which is pretty neat for a large unit of Saurus Warriors and Saurus characters that have magic weapons that grant plus one to hit, like Gur Strike. The Old Blood's command ability simply adds two extra attacks to all nearby Saurus hero models. A great candidate for that is the Carnosaur itself. Give the four limbs two more attacks, and when it hits with at least two of them, the pinned down ability triggers, making the jaws more accurate. The Old Blood hits all units within a 20 inch bubble though, so I'd definitely say this one is better. Now on to price. Being as none of these war scrolls are particularly awe inspiring, nor durable, how much do they cost? The Old Blood and Scar Veterans cost 260 and 240 points respectively, 
and the Trogodon costs only 160 points in the General's Handbook 2018, making the difference 80 to 100 points, which is quite a bit. You're paying for a command ability instead of unbinding, a much better combat profile, and in the case of the Scar Veteran, slightly more durability. Honestly, unless you were loading up on Source Heroes, I don't think the Old Blood is worth it. So its 260 price tag is really quite a bit more considering the other units you'll need to bring along. The Scar Veteran's command ability is somewhat underwhelming, so taking the model as just a combat monster is almost asking for it with its shaky durability. The Star Drake Shield is certainly nice to have on the Cornosaur, but the two models will still die similarly if focused down by an opponent. The Carnosaurs are well over 20% of a normal army, so they can't really be fielded unless the army is built around them. In terms of price, the Trogodons are way more affordable. But army points aren't the only way to purchase these monsters. Seraphon have access to the battle trait Celestial Conjuration. This one allows a Seraphon player to deploy a brand new unit outside of 9 inches of an enemy at the end of the movement phase in exchange for a resource called Conjuration Points. Conjuration Points, or CP, are acquired primarily through sacrificing spellcasting with a Slan Star Master. Troglodons are worth 18 CP, while both Carnosaur variants are worth 24. This, like the points, is actually a pretty big difference. These six Conjuration Points could mean a Razor Don or Skink unit, not to mention 24 CP is also the cost of a Bastilladon, which is almost always a better choice to summon. Summoning combat units is hard to pull off. Without buffs, they will likely die before they get to charge. With a Slan and Chronomatic Cog combination, you could potentially get a plus 3 to charge. In this case, summoning a Carnosaur may prove worthwhile. Charging plus 3 means they only have to roll a 6 or more on 2 dice, which is fairly likely. Something else I mentioned earlier is the Trogodon special rule when shooting its ranged weapon. If the target suffers a wound, the Trogodon is plus 3 to charge, so long as it finishes its charge within half inch of that target. Combined with the Slan and Cog's charge bonus, you're looking at plus 6 inches to the Trogodon's charge roll. That's pretty awesome, and almost guarantees you charge in the turn you come down. From a purely damage sense, I'd probably tell you to save your CP for a Bastilladon, or just dump out a bunch of Salamanders and Razordons. But sometimes you want to tie up a unit in combat, maybe a shooting unit, or a very mobile unit. In this case, I would take the Trogodon over the Carnosaur, if the Trogodon's noxious spittle weapon has any chance of wounding. Being plus 6 to charge can really get the Trogodon in some spots that are annoying for the opponent to dig out. Summoning isn't the only way to bring your models outside of 9 inches of an enemy mid-game, though. The other Seraphon battle trait, Lords of Space and Time, could move one of our dinosaurs. Everything I just said about Slan, Chronomatic Cogs, and the Trogodon's Noxious Spittle goes here as well. Moving on to other parts of the Seraphon Allegiance abilities brings us to command traits and artifacts, both of which are effectively useless for the Trogodon as it's not a hero model. None of the items will really enhance the Carnosaur heroes that much either, but the obvious Gerstrike is always obvious. In terms of command traits, I'd usually give it to the Slan, but if the Source Hero was to take one, getting an extra command point on a 5 up each turn is a pretty sweet bonus. So definitely consider Mighty Warleader. These items aren't the only ways to enhance your big dinosaurs. Many other Seraphon units can do it too. Units like Astroth Bearers and Skink Priests are pivotal to Carnosaur's effectiveness. Once they start to take wounds, they quickly lose their effectiveness. The model doesn't last long, so it needs to make every attack land to earn its keep. The Troglodon loves both of these support characters' buffs, but wouldn't rely on them quite as much. Rerolling to hits would be nice for really trying to win with a Spittle, and rerolling its charge roll would also help with getting in close. With all that said, there is nothing left to do but rate the War Scrolls side by side. The Troglodon has the unique Drawn to Cries ability for extra charge range. But the Carnosaur is vastly superior in combat. 
The Troglodon has a minus one bravery bubble, plus it can unbind. The Carnosaur has a command ability. The Troglodon is much cheaper when considering conjuration points and army points. But the Carnosaurs can take artifacts and command traits. The Troglodon synergizes well with battle traits such as Lords of Space and Time and Celestial Conjuration. But the Carnosaurs actually support other units. Speaking from a competitive standpoint, the winner of this kit compare is the Troglodon. This might surprise some of you, but I'm speaking purely from a competitive sense. Sadly, both models only just scraped their way into a 3 out of 5. I wouldn't say many competitive lists would include either right off the bat. I would say the Troglodon will be worth summoning once every few games. At some point, there will be that weak support character or shooting unit on the enemy's flank that is ripe for the Troglodon's pickings. To make the Carnosaur worth it, you really have to take a source heavy list, which has troubles in the competitive scene at the moment. Honestly, this is really close, and I'd actually probably offer the cop-out answer of build whichever one you think looks cooler, which is why I waited so long to make this video. If you are just starting out, or if you generally stick to lower point games, building the Carnosaur is certainly not a bad idea. They can be quite a nuisance if the opponent doesn't have much to deal with it. And the effects of those force multipliers could be significantly more influential in lower points. So anyway, yeah, I feel like I gave the old cop out, follow your heart, non-answer, but I got so many requests for this one, I didn't want to leave you guys hanging. Let me know why you think I'm wrong, or why you agree with me, and as always, thanks for watching.